So hello everyone and welcome to today's video. I'm just back from Miami, got home last night and I haven't been as consistent with training as I would like to be. Tomorrow I spontaneously booked my first ever skiing trip. I'm going to Austria. So today I decided to come into City Gym to run through a full body workout that I will resort to when I'm not able to adhere to my typical training split. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So with a typical full body split, what I will aim to do is two exercises for my quads, two exercises for my chest, two exercises for my back, and one for my hamstrings. So the reason that I do this is I want the most bang for my buck from the session that I'm doing. When I'm doing chest, for example, I'm getting some tricep in there as well. When I'm doing back, I'm getting some biceps. And when I'm doing quads, I'm getting some glutes, not that I need to focus on my glutes anymore. When I'm looking to save time, I won't do a back squat because of all the fucking around that goes with putting on plates and taking off plates and warming up. So I will usually do a machine-based exercise such as a hack squat or a leg press and we're gonna roll with the leg press for exercise number one. So oftentimes when I'm going traveling the next day, I'm usually fucking procrastinating all day. So I leave myself a very little time to get a workout done. If I'm stuck for time, I'm just gonna run through two sets per exercise. If I have more time, I'll do three. Uh, but if you're someone who's, let's say, just not able to train for the next few days, it's not hugely important that you get the exact amount of volume that you're typically used to using. If you can just do a handful of sets, per muscle group at a decent intensity, you're going to inflict enough of a stimulus to be able to maintain the muscle that you have. Now, as much as I recommend to rest as much as possible between sets, to make each set as competent as it possibly can be, if you're on a time crunch, again, it's okay to cut your rest periods a little bit short. Similar to dropping the amount of sets that you're doing per body part, it's just gonna allow you to save a little bit of time so you can get in, get your session done, and get the fuck out. So leg press is notorious for a load of fuckers loading up more weight than they can physically handle to try and show off to people who aren't even looking at them in the first place. The thing about a back squat is you can't really ego lift with a back squat without other people knowing about it because it's very, very obvious if you're cutting a range of motion very, very short. But a lot of people seem to think that if they go on a leg press with a load of fucking weight, weight plates falling off the machine, you just about bend your knees that you know that is a viable exercise or that you're not in fact ego lifting. So strip back the weight, get full range of motion with it. My knees are nearly puncturing my fucking lungs at the bottom of the movement. The more range of motion that you can safely get out of the exercise, the more effective it's going to be. Right, so the second exercise is going to be a leg extension. So there's different ways you can do a full body workout, like the one that I'm following. You could do quads, then you could do a chest exercise, then you could do a back exercise or any other way that you want to distribute it. Or you can just do, let's say, both quad exercises, then move on to two chest exercises, two back exercises. Really doesn't matter. I just want to be as efficient as possible with this workout here today, because I do have to get the fuck out of here. And I want to get my two most hated exercises out of the way first, and those are the two quad ones. feels fucking right. So I was looking back over a client's video of their leg extension the other day. And leg extension is an exercise that can feel very, very uncomfortable as you approach those last few repetitions. 
but it's important to not lose the mental battle when it comes to something like a leg extension. Your quads are gonna be burning, you're gonna be feeling very, very fatigued on it, and every morsel of your being is going to want to stop that set. But you have to push through that pain barrier, especially with an exercise as uncomfortable as that, because if you were to look at the speed of the first repetition to the last repetition, and if there's not much difference, you've got more in the tank. So put the head down and get through it. I fucked up the way that I said it last time. But when it comes to building muscle, there's nothing easy about it. There's nothing quick about it. And when you ask people, how do you get a chest? How do you get a big back? How do you get a big set of legs? The one word that is nearly always within those sentences is how do I get it fast? How do I get it quick? The thing about quick and easy is that it's not worth having. It's not valuable. If you can look back in five years time and look at the physique that you've managed to build through hard work, through grit, through determination, through putting the head down when things get difficult, you're going to appreciate it a lot more. And it's going to be something that you can brag about a lot more because you know the work that it took to get it. Right, that's quads done. Man, I was fucking efficient. 10 minutes. A lot of people wonder about how it is that they know what weight to use for a particular set. And think about it is there's no rocket science to it. What you should do in your first set is pick a weight that you know you're going to be able to handle and assess based off of how you performed in that first set, what weight you're gonna use for the next set, whether you're gonna go lighter, whether you're gonna go heavier, or whether you're gonna keep it the same. Yeah, so a lot more challenging on that one. Again, probably kept my rest periods shorter than I otherwise would. I think I had like five, six repetitions. So I'm gonna set my goal on maintaining at least that for the third set. And the thing is, as well, it's a lot of a mental game. So as much as I can expect that as I get more fatigued, my reps will drop off. I'm never going into a set going, fuck, this is gonna be weak. Because if we're going in mentally thinking that something's gonna be more challenging, well then it fucking is. So rather go into it with no expectations, aiming to hit as high a benchmark of reps as you possibly can. If you fall short of that, so be it. But never go in going, oh fuck, this set is definitely gonna be worse than the set before. It's like fucking cardio. I'll do a chest fly, cable fly. You might be wondering why am I doing the fly from a low to high position. If you're coming in this direction, low to high is going to be more upper chest fibre. If you're doing the more popular version, which is kind of high to low, that's going to be a little bit more lower fibre. And if you want kind of a more holistic tension across your whole entire chest, you're going to go from pretty much this mid position. This is ex exercise as a fly, right? What you see a lot of people doing is they're doing more of a shoulder raise. So their hands, their arms stay pretty much side by side with their body, and they're doing something like that. But that's going to be pre predominantly your front delt more than it's going to be your chest. Front delt. What you want to do is think of it as a fly. You want your arms out to the side of your body, and you want them coming across your body like so, and then wide again. <laughs> What you don't want is to have your arms pinned by your side and you're simply just moving them up towards the ceiling because that's a shoulder exercise. <sighs> that 
that's that for chest. Gonna move straight onto back now. One vertical pull, one horizontal pull, then a hamstring exercise, and we get the fuck out of this gaff. biceps are a bit fatigued from the chest flies. So having a bit of a knock-on effect in terms of my strength on the pull-up. It has to be one of the worst exercises for maintaining strength as you progress through the sets. There'll be some occasions I'll be in the bodybuilding or somewhere else, pumping out 16, sometimes 18 reps of pull-ups. And then in the second set, I get like fucking six. It's just uh, more so than any other exercise. You just get such a full pump in your biceps, I think more so than anything else. But also you're pulling your whole entire body weight up, let's say 12 to 20 times, if you're very, very good at pull-ups. And because of that, I suppose your forearms are going to be very fatigued, your grip strength is going to be very fatigued, your biceps, which are both smaller muscle groups than your back, which is the ones that want, which, which is the muscle that you want to train. And usually with pull-ups, the further that you progress with the sets that you do, so as you go from set two to set three, it's definitely your forearms and your biceps giving out as opposed to your back being physically unable to contract. So ideally, I should take my own advice and use straps when I'm doing, doing so, just so I'm bringing my back a little bit closer to failure than they'll get without straps. Cable row upstairs. I think I'm just hating the gym in general. Well, Shh, God, God. I mean, I love the gym. It's my favorite thing to do. <sighs> I think you're better off when you're doing full body workouts. I think for most people, they can have a tendency to go on too long. So more so than any other exercise, like you could probably fly through a push day, fly through a pull day within reason. But because it's like a whole body fatigue, you've got your lower body fatigued, you've got your push muscles and your pull muscles fatigued, you can have an increased intense tendency to drop the intensity as you progress throughout the workout. But more so than any other split, Hugely important that you focus, you dial in, you do what you need to do. Otherwise you could be in the gym for upwards of two hours. And the fact that you're following a full body split means that you haven't got as much time available as you would like to work out. So what's the fucking point in going to the gym three days a week to spend in excess of two hours at the gym for those three days? You'd be much better off splitting it up into 45 minutes, five days a week, if that's gonna be the case. <laughs> I fucking hate back. I hate it. That's probably my best muscle group as well. Fucking hell. Right, hamstrings. And then done. Ooh. That's it. 39 on the button. 
we are done. Quick, efficient, you don't need to spend hours in the gym to get an efficient workout done. Concentrate, focus, knuckle down, do what you gotta do. Bob's your uncle, Mary's your aunt, get the fuck out. Right, so that is today's full body workout over and done with. Took me the bones of 40, 50 minutes to get seven high quality, high intensity exercises done. Do that two or three times a week and trust me, that is all you're gonna need, especially if you're on the newer end of the spectrum to being in the gym. So thank you all for tuning in. As always, drop the video a like if you gained something from it, if you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already and make sure that you tune in to the next one. Take care. Mm -hmm.